Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and I wanted to share some Udu drums with you today. These are some drums I love to play to relax. I use them on recording sessions. They're very quiet, so you have to mic them pretty closely. Sometimes you can put a mic inside them. The mics I like to use for that are these Countryman mics, which are omnidirectional. And if there's a hole in your Udu drum, there's not in this one. And I don't mean the hole by the top or the side, but I mean actually drilled in the drum. You can put this contact mic in there and it sounds amazing. But for today, I'm just using some outside the drum mics for this particular drum. Later on, we'll try some in, inside the drum mics. So this video will be about several types of voodoo drums. I have about seven of them here to show you. Uh, some are common, some are not. Now, if you don't know this, the Udu drum is a version of the Nigerian side hole pot drum. I first encountered these in New York City around 1979. A fellow named Frank Giorgini was bringing them into uh, Drummer's World, which is uh, my friend Barry's drum store. So I bought my first one, which was this drum. This is an Mbwata and what he calls it, an emboata. And he originally made these himself. He learned the art uh, from a master maker of these, and he started to sell them. And eventually, LP started putting them out. I'm not sure if they bought the patent or what happened, but they started appearing as mass-produced drums. But the originals were all handmade. Now, this is not an original version of an Udu. It's got the same shape, but it's also got a head. And these are common now. And I picked this drum up in San Francisco back in the 1990s, the early 1990s. Not sure who made it. I think someone just, um, maybe a hobbyist made it. But it's a really nice drum. It's very thin compared to some of the others. Now, the whole idea of an Udu drum, or the Nigerian uh, side pot drum, is to have a couple holes and they create a bass sound that you can bend the pitch with like this. So that air is coming out the top when you block it here. If I cover the top with my hand, you don't get anything. It's basically dead. So these two holes give you that sympathetic, you know, bass tone that you can get. And you can bend it by moving your hand like this. And then you can play on the side. It takes a little practice to get used to it. Uh, I play a lot of different kinds of hand drums, a lot of congas, djembe, dumbek, things like that. So I use all those kinds of techniques on this drum. Uh, you can also use finger techniques. So. that are common in a lot of kind of frame drums. So, you know, anything goes, whatever you want to do. They're just really fun to play. I didn't study these with anyone. I just kind of picked it up. I've seen great players play like Jamie Haddad and Glenn Velez, obviously. But um, I just, like I said, I do this for fun. I do play it on uh, several sessions that I do here in the studio. I'll uh, overdub Udu parts. You can hear these on lots of pop music. Sting used them a lot. Um, you can hear those in, so, in some of his older records. So I definitely recommend maybe getting one or two of these and just having some fun with them. They're very inexpensive. These, these drums with the heads are going to be more. But I remember getting those Udu drums for under $100, the original ones. So let's talk about some of those original drums. So these are what you would get now if you purchase these from LP. I believe this one is an LP one. They're kind of thick compared to the old ones, twice as thick, really. And they're heavy, too. So you might like that sound a little better. To me, it gives it kind of a, um, 
high end, almost basketball kind of bouncing, you know, that sound of a basketball. And I, I prefer this kind of sound personally. I have a feeling the original drums that these came from were pretty thin. So the thicker ones are okay. They're, they're, you know, they're not going to break as easy if you drop them. I've not dropped one, so I don't know how easy they break. <laughs> Here's an Mwata. This is one of my favorite Udus. I'll play a little of this. So this has a lot of different kinds of tones. You have this top part, which you can actually use like a drum. So I really like this one. It's got a lot of tone variations. And it's got this little hole, like I was talking about before, where you can put a mic. And we'll hear that uh, the last thing we do today. We'll put a mic in there. We'll show you a few others. All right, now, the hardest thing about the Udus is how to mount them. Normally, you can sit, you know, Indian style, cross-legged on the ground, and do that. That gets uncomfortable after a while, especially if you're playing live. So what I do is I take some tubing, and you can buy these things, by the way, and basically these are electrical pipe connectors. And I have a tubing bender where I can just bend tubing, and that's what I do. And I'll bend it to the shape. This particular one will fit in a regular snare drum stand that I have here. And that'll fit the majority of my drums. You can also, uh, they make a top for this that looks like this. And you can stick that in there, but that will take away a good bit of your ability to play on different sides of the drums. So I normally would not use that piece. So you can experiment, but that's what I suggest, getting, getting a pipe bender, and they're not too expensive, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, or any hardware store really, and just bend a pipe and put some tubing over there that you use for like an air conditioner line, and then put it uh, in the snare drum stand. Don't use a trap table to play them because it'll rattle. Snare drum stand, a really good one, like a heavy, this one's a heavy pearl stand, you can see, something really, really heavy with a lot of weight. So. You know, it's not moving around too much when you're playing it. And then the drum will most, will, most of these drums will just sit right in there, like that. This one fits perfectly. And it grips it pretty tight, that insulation. So that's what I recommend for these, uh, mounting them. Or you can sit on the ground and play them like that. That's fine. Again, for me, getting a little older, it gets a little bit uncomfortable after a while. So again, this drum has a head, and there's no name for these things. There, people call them different names. But I call it a new drum with a head. And it's a calf head, so you got to be careful you don't break it. And depending on the weather, you might need to just take a blow dryer to it and tighten it up. As it gets more humid, it's going to loosen up. You don't want it too tight. I like to do some pitch stuff on it. You can even do slaps like that, all right? Super versatile. So uh, this is the drum that I use just for fun playing on the most. Now for recording, the drum that I normally turn to is this larger one, like I said. And you can put a mic in here, which we'll do. Again, I keep saying it. Because it's got the lowest sound there, the loudest as far as the, the pitch bend. But as far as playing on the drum,
Again, it has a little bit of that slap basketball kind of rubbery sound. All right, but if you can get past that, this is the one that I would get first. Now let's talk a little about playing techniques. So uh, really, like I said before, anything goes. But what I do is a side-to-side -side motion like this. So I'm doing that, thumb, thumb, and then fingers, fingers. And then, of course, any kind of conga heel toe. You just have to kind of reconcile that palm movement on the open hole when you're doing that. So that's really not too similar to playing heel toe like we do on congas. So that's something you'll get used to. But again, that heel toe is very useful for all kinds of hand drums. So I use a lot of that. Then uh, also you can scrape like this with your nails. You can do backwards flicks, what I call them. So. And if you have a head, like on that other drum, you can do that on there, and it's pretty effective. And of course, scrapes. And obviously, just playing any kind of open single. Now, you do have to play with a limp wrist, so it's a little like bongo playing, where you just your hand is pretty loose, so you can get a nice slap. So all the Ludu drums are going to sound a little bit different. So what we'll do, we'll pause, and I will throw some mics uh, in, a, in one of these just to show you the difference in the sound, which is a lot of difference. So stand by. So I've put a few mics in this Mbwata drum. This drum's really neat because it's got two holes, the top and the bottom. There's no other Udu that I've ever owned that has two holes. Of course, you can drill a hole in these. You just got to use a ceramic bit. Be careful. Some of the newer Udus, the hole is so small, they won't fit my mics. Now, the mic I use is a Countryman model EM101, which is an omnidirectional lavalier mic. I really love them. They're super quiet. They're omnidirectional, so wherever you put it inside the drum, it's going to capture everything. The benefit for using two mics is I can do panning left and right, which is pretty neat. So let's uh, give this a listen. So uh, I've put these two mics in here, so now you'll be hearing the inside of the drum as well as outside, the outside mics. I try to give you a lot of different tone variations there. So you can hear the difference. It's big. So if you play live, that's a great alternative. Any kind of other mic around the drum is probably going to give you some feedback problems because they have to be so loud. Now you can use in-ear monitors. That'll help a lot. And if you're isolated from the rest of the group in a percussion setup, it may work. But I definitely recommend using internal mics. But in the studio, I like external mics. Uh, I might dial in a little bit 
of the internal mics. I kind of think of it when I'm recording acoustic guitar, if the guitar has a pickup system, I'll use that, I'll run that direct and maybe mix it just a little into the signal. But the best sound with an acoustic guitar is gonna be from really good external condenser mics. So that's how you do it on these. And again, these are these Countrymen. Uh, they're older mics, they're not, no longer made. I'm sure you can find them used. It's um, EM-101, that's the um, model. And get an omnidirectional, because if it's cardioid or hypercardioid, wherever you end up putting it in the drum, it's gonna face that. These capture everything in the drum there, all right? Good, so I'm gonna show you a few more drums now. We'll go ahead and put this on the floor. Now, one that I forgot to show you earlier was this Utar drum. I actually really like this one. This also has a hole for miking. The only thing about this, the hole for the miking is all the way up here. So I may drill another hole here. And by the way, this is just clay that they use, you know, some sort of putty to keep that mic in there. It dries out, but you know, stuff's cheap. So you can uh, replace that, obviously. This is a nice drum though. It's a little different than the other one I showed you, which was this, because it's got a little more playing surface to it. So. All right, so this is a fun drum. And it sounds pretty good mic. It's very dry compared to the others. So the ones that are available now, I would suggest getting would be this one. This is sort of the standard Udu, all right? And then, again, I like this one. It's a little, it's well, not a little, a lot different sounding than that one. You can go back in the video and hear that other one. And it's a nice variation. You can even use them both together. Sometimes I'll put them, you know, rattling a little on the table but so you can have a setup and, and you know originally these were set up in four different drums I know that I heard that uh, that Frank you know the guy who invented this modern version of the Udu used to make them in sets of four which is really cool I don't have a set of four uh, that he made but I heard that he had done that I'll show you a few more drums this is one that I also got from him this is no longer made this has got a very strange drum. It's really hard to mount, but I have used it as a single drum. Just holding it like that. It's kind of like a barbell, you know. Uh, you can mount it, it's just tricky, and I don't have the mounting system for it right now. But I've not ever seen another one of these, but uh, I, I just picked it up with the rest of the ones back uh, from Barry in the early 80s. Now, there's one more drum I want to show you that's really awesome. It's a little different than all the others. It's called a Hygiene drum. And I first saw Jamie Haddad playing it. He was just killing it with this thing. So I went and bought one. It's the original uh, version. They make a, a different version now. So let me go mic that up with the internal mics and uh, set that up for you. So I'm back with a Hygiene drum, and this is a really cool drum. The only thing is, it's just very quiet. It's the quietest of all the Udu drums. Those of you who play tabla well, and I do not play tabla well, will really appreciate this kind of drum. It's very similar in looks. Obviously, it doesn't have real drum heads, but it has two holes here, and that's it. So you can look at it closely here. Now, there are similar things made. This particular model is not made. This, again, was made by Frank. And you see I have two internal mics set up on this. So when I use this live, I will mic it like that. So.
Now make sure you use a heavy stand because it will travel on you. I'm using an old Roger stand with some really heavy rubber feet on there. All right, so that's the Hagini drum. So we'll just play a little for you and we'll call it a day. And again, this is something I do for fun. I love hand drums. I have all kinds of different drums. So uh, thanks and we'll see you next time.